Hey, I'm Will with Cardboard Minute. We're going to be taking a look at For Science, a game designed by Eric Reyes and published by Grey Fox Games. In this game, we are going to be trying to develop a ultimate universal antivirus while also prototyping different antibodies and antivirals for the viruses that are created and all using classic children's building blocks. There is a bit of a dexterity component, but of course you can choose to play this without that component and I'll explain in my rules overview. And then I'll play through a quick game session and give you my review afterwards. So here I have set up with just a basic setup of the game. There are some optional different labs that you can choose to play with to change the difficulty level. Uh, I'm going to be doing just the base game for uh, explanation's sake. I am going to be leaving out the events, but if you do wish to play with them, you may wish to use the official timer or timer app uh, with the links found in the rulebook, because at certain points during the app, uh, it will notify you when to draw an event card. And I'll give you my review of those uh, at the end of the video. So we have it set up with three different labs where we can start to build different virus chains. And I'll get to this in, in case you've played this game before, you're probably noticing something different, something wrong here, but I'll cover that. And we're going to be building in three different labs as well as each player will have a player character card, which gives them special abilities as well as their own personal lab to do a different type of prototyping. Now you may be wondering about the, the comment about this being wrong. And that's because at each stage of the game, when you're playing with multiple players, you need to have someone else verify your work before moving on to the next stage. So in this case, these lines do not match up. So this would be verified as wrong and it would have to be fixed before we could move on to the building phase. And you'll see what that looks like when I continue with the rules. The game is played with a timer. And uh, here for my playthrough, I've opt opted to use a kind of classic kitchen timer. This is probably the third most obnoxious and stressful timer I could think of. Uh, if you want to know what the other ones are, you will have to ask me later. Uh, we have some different boards here for storing cards. Not all of them are on screen, but they are really not necessary. They're just places to store cards and discard piles. Uh, the one we're going to be drawing the most from is the design and the waste of design cards. Now we have three different viruses that have different criteria that we must meet before we can build the viruses, as well as a mutation where we have one to start and additional mutations will be added if we ever have to fill the waste of design board up to full, then a new one is played, that mutation is drawn and placed and those cards are then removed. So how do cards work? Well, each player will have one card in their hand and uh, unless your player power allows you to have more, and that card can not be directly shown to other players, but you can choose to place it in front of any of the labs or even at uh, the beginning or end of a group of cards. You can even play it in your own area and you don't necessarily have to place it correctly right away. It just has to be correct before you move on to the building or before you, uh, you complete the building stage. However, you also only have one card in your hand. And if you do have to put the card down, you have to place it face down so that you can't look at it or players can't look at while you're doing other activities. Uh, everyone in the game will be kind of working together to build different things. Different players can each pursue each of the, the main labs, but only the player whose personal lab has um, it, they're working on can build the, that lab. Also, there's the universal cure, which I will get to in a bit, and you'll see how that works. And that is the main goal of the game, is to achieve a certain amount of points of universal cure. So, like I said at first, playing card. So we'll play a card, and you'll see that there are lines connecting and leading to and from the card. The labs have these metal plates on them, and this is considered as the table. So this is the surface you're playing on and everything is leading from there. So whatever you have drawing lines to must be connecting to the table and anything that does not have a line directly touching 
leading to the table cannot touch the table. And this is holds true for each of the cards you play. So let's see if I had something like this. Here we have these lines are all appropriately connected. And of course, before you move on to build, you have to meet the requirement of the card. So in this case, we have more yellow blocks than orange blocks, which holds true here. Well, however, we need a minimum length of three. So we'd have to add one more, and maybe I have this card in hand, and that would create a valid build. It would not necessarily be an easy build because there's a single block at the bottom, and all this would have to be built on top, but it could be. So you then ask a separate player to verify that you have created a correct uh, combination here that both satisfies the virus as well as any mutation and has all legal connections. Then once they have verified that, you will be turning the car sideways here to show that it is verified. This also locks that lab so that nobody can add any more cards to it or add any mutations to it. So it's essentially, it's safe to start working on. You can choose to work on things ahead of time. However, uh, you cannot complete your building until a lab has been verified. And of course, if you decide to make changes, that just ruins your lab. So uh, in terms of building, the rules are very simple. You can pretty much orient pieces any way that you like, except for if you have the star expansion, which means that they'll have to be standing straight up. The pieces, like I said, can be oriented anyway, as long as you follow the right building connections. So right, if there's a line leading between pieces, those pieces must touch. They don't necessarily have to be on top of each other, but they do have to be touching. So touching could just be side by side like this would be fine. You of course could rotate pieces any way you choose, depending on how you want them to build. And any of these would be legal building. So in the case of our example here, I could have you know, something like this and then the yellow block. And then the red one has two lines, but that really doesn't matter. And then additional yellow block, with the red and the yellow not touching, because they're not touching here, but an orange block would have to touch both of them. So you know, maybe I'd turn this one around, have an orange block touching them both, and so on. Once you have completed your building, have another player verify it, and once it has been verified, then you can choose to remove the buildings uh, if you like. There is a limited number of pieces, so if, especially if you're playing higher player counts, you will have to be careful because um, if a piece is being used, you can't use it. Once it has been verified, you are gonna tally up how many points you're getting. And there's two types of points. There are these book looking or folder shapes, and then there are these microscopes. You are gonna be adding up all those symbols on the cards as well as Different players will have different abilities, but the most typical one you'll see is one additional microscope per card in that construction. So here we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven microscopes minus the four from the virus, because that one counts too. So there'd be three microscopes and two lab journals. And then you can immediately spend those. You cannot save point these points for later, they have to be spent immediately at the time of acquiring. You can spend them in a couple of places. You can spend a one to remove any wasted cards, which I will cover how those are placed. You can spend some on different abilities that some of the player powers have, or more commonly, you are gonna buy universal antivirus pieces. The cost of them shown on the back. So I believe we had three left over, so I could buy you know, something like this piece, and two books so I could buy that piece. So now that we have these pieces, you'll then see how we come to win the game. So you'll see each of these universal lab pieces will have typically up to three different colored viral blobs and some white symbols representing different antibody connection points, I guess, that are on them. Your goal is to get a total number of these white symbols properly enclosed 
and the total value will add up together to be whatever the requirement is for completing the game. So if you're playing, uh, I believe it's 12 or four players, then you'll have to have a total of 12 before you can win. And these, uh, so one player can choose to take some time positioning these. And as long as they ha make legal connections where colors are matched up with light colors, and of course there are some any color connections, then that would be a, a legal connection. So, you know, maybe I'll place, I can place something like that. Once a virus is completely encapsulated, then it is considered complete, and you can then add up how many of those white symbols are in the, sh the shape, and, add, and then readjust the graph here to show what st your status is. Th sometimes you may want to do this multiple times per game because there are certain player powers that require you to have a certain amount, as well as some player powers will have some bonuses to, to those different symbols, um, either for, like for doing it or for the sake of calculating things. All right, so lastly, uh, we have some tokens here that you can place to show what your target is. Uh, we have the wasted design cards. So this is if you possibly mess up or just decide that the card you have is no good, you can choose to remove a card from anywhere. It can be from your hand or from in play and place it in the wasted card section. Uh, I also mentioned you can choose to rotate cards any time. And if you remove a card, you place it in the design section. Uh, once the wasted design area is full, you'll then remove all three draw a mutation card and add it to the furthest left virus as long as it has not been verified in lockdown. So that is it for the game. Now there are some additional rules with the expansion and the stars, which is very simple. You just make sure they're standing upright. Uh, there are some additional lab pieces, there's vents, uh, and there's a whole host of different player powers and things to, to, to use. As far as the single player goes, the rules are nearly identical. The only difference is that you can verify your own objectives and your own uh, builds by yourself without having someone else do it. Otherwise, it plays exactly the same way as you would do with higher player counts. Okay, all right, so let us begin. I'm just going to, as much as, as nice as this collection designs is, I'm going to get rid of those and put some of these at the bottom. Uh, I'm gonna be playing without the star expansion, just to simplify things. And, uh, and I'll go over some of that in my review. We have our base piece here. Um, I'm gonna draw a card to start. And we're going to begin. I've decided to put my player board over here just to make it a little easier to see on camera so I can focus on building in the central area. This could get a little crowded with cards, so I will try to leave some space up here. And time to set the timer. So we've got 15 minutes. Let's take a look at these cards first. We have a red or an orange on all cards. That should be relatively easy. And we also require to have a red touching a blue semicircle. We have more yellow uh, or equal to than orange. And then we have either two reds touching or two purples touching. So that might be a little bit tricky. And the goal for the one player mode is to have a total of six of these viral symbols. Now I'll try to build a little more off over here so that we don't get too much lens flare or flare from the, I mean, we'll build down here. And that way we're not getting too much glare from the lights. All right. Here we go. Seeing the timer for 15 minutes. And, oh man, this is going to be so frustrating. <laughs> so uh, nerve wracking with the ticking sound. But I think that will allow you guys to see that pretty clearly. Okay, and begin. 
So I need more yellows and purple. Uh, this one's going to be pretty tricky down here. So maybe I will, a red touching up thing, that could be good for here. But I feel like, yeah, I think like that's going to start here. Maybe I get another purple. Oh, perfect. I can get a purple one on top. And the one else connects nicely to the two reds. Good connections. Uh, that's minimum length two. Two purples touching. Okay, we're going to start building this. It is verified. Let's grab blue, yellow, two purples, green, and orange. Peace, and let's start. So the yellow can touch the ground, which is great. And the blue one just has to touch it. So I can just stick it right next to it and now it would be totally legal. Then we have purple, purple. Getting a little tall. I think we still see it in the camera. And then green and then an orange touching it. And there we go. And it is verified. So we are going to gain uh, one, two for the player power. Three, four, five, six, seven as well as one book. So let's grab the book piece and go three, let's see, four, five, six, seven. And then we can wipe all of these and get a new disease. Okay, we're off to a pretty good start. Let's put these pieces back. And I do need a new design card. So I can always, at any time, add a mutation to a disease with no mutations to earn five of these microscopes. That might be a good last minute effort. Okay, I need... Oh, you want know this card actually meets all these requirements currently. So that's good here because it meets this one and it adds a red card. Although we need to connect more. Maybe if I, if I rotate, you know, a red on top of a blue is not a good idea. The red on the ground, the blue on top. Do I want to add that here? Would this be a good way to build? I feel like it might be. And there's a red, it still satisfies everything. And oh man, this is gonna be tricky. Oh no, it doesn't have a red or an orange. I can't do that. Uh, okay, more yellow than orange. Or, okay, that's gonna go here. And we need green touching something. So that should be a good match for here. Okay, green touching blue. Oh no, this doesn't connect anywhere. Does it connect up here? There is a red piece in all car tiles. This is gonna be extremely tricky. Okay, verified. Connections are all good. There is a red in each card. There's a red and a blue touching. This actually happens a couple times. Okay, let's start with that one. This is going to be a very, very tricky one because we need three of these semicircles and these are not easy to put together. Two purples and a green and a yellow. Okay, let's set these over here. And we have yellow on the ground, red on the ground. Let's try to keep this as simple as possible. So there's a purple. Touching the yellow, but not touching this green or the blue. The red is touching the yellow, but not the purple. See, it's off the side a little bit. There's going to be a blue. And then another red. Oh my gosh, this is a bit tricky. And then another red. Okay, it's a little wobbly, but it's holding. And let's get our green. Do I want to straddle it here? No, I feel like that's a little wobbly. It might. Mm hmm. 
Okay, that clock is starting to bother me. Okay, you know, this might actually be good here. Oh no, but I have to put purple on top of a blue. Okay, maybe. I gotta make sure these are not touching. They're pretty close. Uh, no, it's wobbling. Okay. And then let's see if I can get a purple on top. Okay. Red, blue, red, red. Oh, no, my, my second red has to touch the purple. So this one I'm going to swing around and touch this purple. Okay, and then this red is not touching it. Okay, so red, blue, red, red. The red's touching the purple. Purple's touching the yellow, but it's not only touching the red. Then we have yellow, green, blue, purple, blue. I think I got it. Okay, and good. So we have a three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, minus four, uh, so it's four plus two is six. Okay, that's not too bad. So let's grab two of these. But more importantly, the three books, which is very nice. So I should probably start connecting this to see where we're at. So I don't need that many points playing single player. I only need six. And I might need more yellows, though. Let's see here. No. It doesn't connect there. And maybe here. Oh, I would love to enclose some of these. Okay, this this works here. And we'll have a red yellow enclosure. Okay. So one, two, three, four. Do I have a I do have a double blue, excellent. And I need some sort of a multi-yellow enclosure thing here. So there's that side. Oh, how can I do this? Okay, there. I don't know if I can get this red one enclosed somehow. No, that one's no good, no good. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four reds. I have one blue, and I have one yellow. So four, five, six. Is that it? Am I done already? One, two, three, four, five, six. Four, five, six. And wow, that was actually surprisingly fast. And how much time do I have left? Oh, I'm only, uh, only halfway through. Okay, well, that worked out pretty good, if I do say so. I don't know if I just got lucky with the pieces. Uh, let's see, let's clear the cards. Clear these. And there we go. Okay, well, I have already on the game, but of course I'm playing on basically the easiest difficulty level without using variants. So let's head back up and I will give my review. Okay, and that is Force Science. Uh, as you saw on the easiest difficulty, it plays pretty quickly, uh, especially at one player. It's uh, definitely much diff more difficult at more players uh, because the virus here kind of compounds a bit, like getting Six is not that difficult, but getting 12 means you need a lot more internet connected pieces. And it was uh, quite challenging at, at the higher player counts. Uh, as well as you start, especially at four or more, you start running out of pieces and you really have to coordinate better with how things work. So, all right, let's begin the review here. First of all, uh, in terms of the graphic design, it is uh, the artwork and design is quite clear and is easy to read. Uh, the rule book is probably a little bit too overwordy. Uh, there is a lot of jokes in there that actually cause to distract from learning the rules. 
uh, which oh, even though they're funny and well written, I found that it was, you know, once I decided to not read the jokes and just read the rules, it actually made learning the game easier. Uh, so, you know, be aware of that. It doesn't, it's not a deal breaker because um, the rules themselves do work. They are, again, a little more complicated than they need to be. Uh, for what's ultimately a fairly simple speed dexterity game. The, uh, there's a nice puzzle layer that comes in with the matching things up. And also the game really lends itself towards knowing from multiple plays what types of connections will work and what won't. You know, like having too many of these blue pieces, uh, you know, and red pieces, especially if you have to start bridging them and making, you know, slopes and things, uh, do not hold well, right? They, uh, they're too slippery, the, the pain on them is too, you know, too slippery to hold and things will start to slide. So you'll start to learn those kinds of interactions. Also, the stars are way too small for how the star expansion works because uh, if you make the mistake of having a star on the bottom layer and you're trying to get two pieces to balance on the arms of a star you know with something over top of them like it's you're gonna have a hard time it's <laughs> the stars uh, does make things harder which you know maybe may not be what you're looking for but i would probably choose to play without it at most player counts and player types uh, I think especially with children, I found that the, uh, well, this is easier than some dexterity games. The, the complexity, especially once you're getting to like three cards, uh, it is quite the structure that you need to build and balance, even with like the large children's playing blocks, that younger children will have some difficulties combining both the requirements and the building. Right, and it's not just that they don't have the dexterity to build something that balances, it's that deciding, okay, this one has to touch this one, but it cannot touch that one. And these two have to be touched on the bottom and touching the ground. And that one can't touch the ground. And, you know, like that kind of puzzling through the block building, uh, especially under a time constraint, can be difficult. Now, there is a million variants in the rule book that I, I do feel, you know, when game developers add in too many variants, it almost like, it, you know, you almost want to say, hey, just tell me what the best way to play is because I want to play that. I don't want you to, to throw every variant you thought of because you couldn't be bothered to play test or because you found too many problems of your game. Instead of, you know, filing down the rough edges, you just threw in variants people could help themselves with. So there's a bit of a, a knock with that, but there is the option that if you are playing, especially with even like very young children, I would say lay the pieces down on a table flat and build the build the things that way. And that would make things much easier. So then you're looking at like an imaginary table on one end and you don't have to worry so much about balancing. So that would, that would work. Also, you could remove the timer. Uh, but then again, without a timer, there's no loss condition, so that doesn't work. But you can always choose to raise or de uh, decrease the goals or the timer. You can give yourself more time. You can remove things like events uh, or some of the more complicated cards. And, and all that would, would work fairly well. Okay, so in terms of uh, components, you know, nice chunky blocks are just fantastic. They're very much like the kinds you probably played with as a, as a child, uh, and that's great. You know, the cardboards are okay, wood pieces, you know, the tokens are nice. The uh, virus pieces, everything is, is quite well done. I do have the Kickstarter Deluxe Edition, so I don't know if this, uh, how this compares to retail, but all the pieces are quite nice. Okay, so a couple more things here. Um, while I like and these are these are slight downsides. I will say, while I like the building the universal virus, I kind of feel like that should have been almost a different game. It, it just adds one more layer of complexity and a, and a big table potential table hog, especially at higher player counts. That the table the, the table is already going to be quite full with these rows of cards around each player's board. Uh, that there's 
you know, this, this while fun, makes it almost too complicated and slows things down, as well as adds a lot of unsureness about, okay, are we, are we done? How close are we to being done? Do we need to do more of this or do we need to do more of that? Uh, you know, the, the scientific books lend themselves to having more symbols on them, but the microscope pieces have more end caps and connectors. So you need a variety of both, but it's very hard to judge where you're at. And I, and I feel like, like this is a great game and this is, a, this is also a good game, but combined, they don't work as well. And I kind of wish that they, they had separated them and maybe just streamlined this one into a neater package. Because they could have easily have just done, you know, clear X number of viruses in this much time. And that would have been great. It would have been easier, easier to understand, easier to teach. It would have made a ton of sense. And that would have been all they needed. But they, uh, they, they, they added almost too much. And really, this is kind of the name of the game for this entire package was just too much. And again, it could just be because this, this is the Kickstarter deluxe version uh, and they went overboard with stretch goals. But like, let's look at the, the number of different player boards. Like there's just so many player boards here. It is, it is just unreal I mean, how many different players there are, you know, boards there are. This is totally unnecessary. It's just ridiculous. You know, uh, the number of cards is huge, which, you know, could be fine. But when you start adding in cards that are nonsense cards, then I think that the game suffers because of that. And let, let me give you some examples here. So there are some, just in, in the basic cards, like mutations and things, there are some ones that make sense, right? Like this mutation is design can't use cards with single connectors. Okay, so, you know, cards like this one with a single connector would not work, you know, that's fine. But then you get things like, you know, these, these weird physical cards, like while building this cure, keep your head within six inches of the table while touching blocks, right? Some of these are, are nonsense. Like you have to say, a, you're, you have to come up with a lucky phrase and shout it every time you place or adjust a block. Or let's see what else is there here. Uh, here we go. As part of verifying this build, someone must take a photo of the builder and the built cure. Like really, game designers, can we, can we not do with the silly party game things? It is not, it's not fun to anybody. My kids do not have fun with it. You know, my, you know, my game groups did not have fun with these. Uh, here, hold your, hold your ear with one hand while building. Like, can we, can we get past the silly nonsense things? Like, this is not really that type of game. Maybe there are some gamers who like this sort of thing, but I have, I haven't met any. <laughs> so, you know, there's that. And actually the events are worse. And I played without the event cards because you never know what you're gonna get in here. And it is such a, a mixed bag of things. Like some of them are simple, like add a mutation to the leftmost lab without one. That is a personally, perfectly reasonable, normal event. But then you have open the rule book to page whatever, so you're gonna guess, uh, so you're gonna get a page number based on based on all the design cards and all three laps. So you're gonna add up all the cards, you're gonna turn to that page in the rule book, you're gonna read, you know, say if it's like the, there's nine cards, you're gonna turn to page nine, you're gonna read the ninth sentence and then say, of course. Like, it's just, this is not fun. Like all players walk around the table three times. You know, that like, I feel like, the dexterity portion of the game is fun enough. You don't need these things. And I would highly advise if you do want to play with event cards, maybe going through them and removing the ones you don't like out first so that the events are not going to throw a wrench in your game that you don't like. Um, because the event deck could work very well with, with many of the cards that are in it, just remove the nonsense. Uh, and also in terms of Kickstarter bloat, I will say, Look at this. 
You know, what, you know what this is? This is an entire second set of blocks in, right, like in a, uh, a single color, right? It's like a monochromatic color scheme with the sole purpose of the color scheme makes it harder to identify which block you're going for. So instead of looking at a purple cylinder, it's a blue cylinder. They're all blue. And that's it. Like the diff the diff this difficulty level could have been recreated with just a di different deck of cards that were all in black and white. That would have been fine. But instead, they came with an entirely second set of blocks that not only probably cost a fortune in terms of production and and uh, and shipping weight and size in the box. Right, like this has this has to fit in the box. The box is huge, uh, just to fit all these things in it is just unnecessary. I, I think this game would have done significantly better with just the blocks, the viruses, the mutations, the design, and work by timer. And it would have been a quick, punchy, fun game that you could play of all ages. That would have been affordable, fit on your shelf, and would have been just fantastic, but there's just too much here. I think if I if I was, if this, uh, you know, I'm, I am borrowing this one, uh, from a friend, by the way, um, you know, a friend Neil, who's uh, from our game group, lent it to me because he wanted, um, you know, me to play with my kids and see how we liked it. I think uh, if I had my own copy, I would have preferred to pare it down, uh, you know, or just, you know, I really, uh, if I had seen, if I had just the, you know, the aforementioned basic core gameplay that would have been plenty as a game i would have i would have bought that to play with my family and we would have loved it but as it is it suffers from kickstarter bloat and design bloat right the designers while they came up with a product that there's probably people who are going to love this game and it is very niche not not all gamers like dexterity games to begin with and especially not the silly events and things um, but I think some gamers will love this game, so I'm I'm not going to knock it too heavily in that department. But I think from a um, a marketing standpoint and a uh, reaching more gamer standpoint, they probably would have done better simplifying things a little bit. So, anyways, that's my review. Uh, you know, if you disagree with it, if you want. And uh, meanwhile, I hope this was uh, informative in terms of the gameplay. You give it a try, but I would definitely want to uh, try before I buy in this case to see if this is a good fit for you and your game group uh, because it is such a divisive game. And um, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you do you like the silly party game antics or not? Do you like dexterity games or not? Uh, I I do enjoy dexterity games, where some of my game group does not. Um, but again, my my children did not like any of the antics. So we'll see. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. Um, you know, I'm gonna give this a tentative recommend, but really uh, only if you've got a ton of space and extra money to blow and you're looking for something like this with a silliness. Uh, otherwise, hopefully maybe the, the second edition will be a more stripped down game or you know what, the, the virus cards, I wanna see a whole game built specifically around these that would be i would i would probably enjoy that just as much if not more uh, anyways I, i'm will thanks for watching and have a great time